In global crisis, will you shy away from opportunity and speed right by, ignoring a meal, or will you stop, collect, and feast, no matter how unpalatable? In despair, making the most of food that has been handed to you will become far from the exception. There may come a time when your future looks grim and prospects for food might not match the sterile, cellophane-wrapped reality of your current existence. Will you be able to stomach fare that is far from appealing? Can you eat something not fit for sale by grocer or diner? Ask yourself this. When does food to you look edible? Is it edible once it's been battered and deep fried in oil and cooked golden brown? Does that make your mouth water? Or are you able to see food as it really is? Covered in feather, fur, skin, or scales? Can you get past the smell of putrid guts splattered across your food? Or does it need to be dressed out, marbled, cut, wrapped? And tenderized. Maybe food becomes edible when it's heavily spiced or maybe you just need a touch of pepper and salt. What if it came complete with head, beak, organs and feet? What if it stared at you while you consumed its flesh? The idea of eating in our modern time is to please the palate, to create culinary delicacies and sample a variety of foods from all around the world. We eat foods that leave us little reminder that it was once attached to a real, living, and breathing animal that could sense the world through smell, sight, and sound. But what if our sanitized world was no longer reality? What if there was a disruption in our complex chain of factory food that made food scarce? How long would you fight hunger before diving into a dish that a normal person would ignore? Can you tolerate gore and guts? Fact is, eventually you'll submit to your hunger, cave, and digest parts of flesh that might make you sick to your stomach. Those who couldn't or wouldn't eat any and all available foods throughout our primitive past wouldn't survive. Eating the whole animal wasn't just something fun to do. It was part of everyday life. It had to be done. In many cases, it was the whole animal that was eaten. From the nose and tongue, right to the tail and hooves. Blood, intestines, organs, heart, liver, lungs, and the head and brain were all eaten. From the snout, right to the tail end. To say that no part of the animal was wasted, though, is missing the point. It's far easier to make full use of what you have, or are given through luck or happenstance, than it is to discard less than appealing portions. Scavenging is part of how humans survived historically. It was a way to turn the hard work of top predators into energy. Into another day on Earth with a beating heart. In nature, waste is relative, but being wasteful is costly. It means that more work needs to be done in order to procure additional and sufficient resources. Being wasteful may benefit other animals such as scavengers, which happily feast on man's waste, but can spell disaster to any person trying to actually live off the land. In major crisis, famine, war, or epidemic, Will you be one of the many who becomes weak of stomach? Someone who becomes ill upon inspection of potentially rotting or unsavory foods? Will you be one of the first to die? Or will you revert to your ancestral past, cut, dig, and pull out the useful parts of animals and push it down your throat just to live another day? As someone who has previously tried and failed to live off the land, I can say that survival is visceral. Foods that you used to find unpalatable become tolerable and you begin to see things differently. The world changes and you see yourself doing things that you wouldn't consider doing before. Your definition of food widens and your desire, ability 
and motivation to do things that a civilized world deems unfair or unsporting increases. You become more feral. You rejoin the animal kingdom and find your rightful place inside the food chain. To join your dinner at the table and feast upon the flesh of your guest might not seem proper, but manners are a luxury suited for the abundance of aristocrats. They are not fit for the post-world apocalyptic bush. You eat, and by any means necessary, or you don't and you die. The choice is yours and it's simple. Do or don't do. The world does not care. Nature doesn't care. It has no feelings for you. In life, food is the economy. Life is an endless search for energy. Do you know where your next meal will be from?